What was that moment like for you? It was black history. Like that was just something that I was like, wow. It's crazy how it went from us three from championships to making history to Fist now making history. That moment was so unreal. I was like, we just did something history. <laughs> we did it. And we were like, period. I would do it all over just to feel that one moment again. I'm Shalise Jones. I'm Connor McLean. And I'm Jordan Childs. Yeah, they are, and they're history. What's up, y'all? It's Ari Chambers here, and I'm surrounded by some icons, which I'm kind of fangirling a little bit. Don't tell anybody, but we have Shylees Jones, Connor McLean, and Jordan Childs, and I want to get to know you all. I know y'all have known each other for a long time. I heard, um, you know, parents talking about how they've known Shy since she was Jordan's height, and that's, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a thing. But we know music is really big for a lot of y'all. So if you had one walk-on song or approaching any apparatus y'all have. Let's start with you, Shy. Currently, it's been like the Lift Me Up new song by mm -hmm. Rihanna. I feel like it really gets me like in my zone and like focused oh. and that just whole Lift Me Up like really gets me. I would say Good Life by Kanye West. Okay. Mine is always Motivation by Normani. Mm -hmm. She's like my go-to. Any Normani song is like, I don't know, just gets me hype. It's giving black excellence and we're gonna get into more black excellence. I just love the way both of y'all move, so we'll talk about it, <laughs> we'll talk about it. But. Obviously, we're here because there's so much history within the three of you all that I don't know if you understand the magnitude of when y'all were standing on the podium together. It was just so powerful. There have been such iconic moments throughout sports history that have transcended generations, and I think that that's absolutely one image that's forever ingrained in my mind, and I'm sure it's forever ingrained in a lot of people's mind. What was that moment like for you? Honestly, I think it was more of like wow, we're really standing up here. There's three of us, not just one, but just being able to look at each other and be like, wow, we did something great for not just like the people above us, but also the generation that's under mm -hmm. us. And not only is our sport turning more into like a diverse sport, just knowing that it was just the beginning of something that's gonna continue to be more. I feel like it was just all the aches and pains that we went through and we have been able to dominate and just thrive and continue to succeed in what we did. And so every single time I see that picture, whether one of us posted it or like somebody else posted it, I'm just like, wow, we did that. And I feel like we're heroes in a lot of ways. Connor, not every day does one become a U.S. gymnastics champion. What was it like being alongside Jordan and Shy in that moment? That moment was so unreal for me and I think for all three of us. I mean, it was just so unbelievable, but we also, made history and like we realized that and it's just so inspiring and I inspired myself and I inspired other people so it just means so much to me. After I saw like on social media I was like oh my gosh we really did that. Did you check your phone right after? I mean I already knew like when I when you we were up there on the podium we literally me and Jordan like when I tell you we just like looked at each other and we were like wow like we really just did this like mm -hmm. and we were even walking down after like having our blacks and everything we were like Period. <laughs> so like when we, we said, so yeah, period. so like going to like on a social media, I was like, oh, it's gonna be something. But yeah, I was just like in that moment, I was like, wow, like you know, here's more of us. Like this is, it just made me so happy. We don't really consider, or maybe we do, the barriers of entry for us being women of color, people of color, athletes of color in sports that, especially gymnastics, super expensive, super um, not as inviting mm -hmm. as it should be to black athletes. So what made you actually start? and want to do this and push through in order to be elite? I feel like personally, there was a time in our lives where we thought it was normal before mm -hmm. we actually realized what was going on through our sport. Um, for me, it took me until the age of 16. I started when I was seven and a half, so that's a long mm -hmm. time period to where I was just going into the gym thinking, oh yeah, I look like everybody else. Like This is what it's supposed to be like, this and the other. Um, but then by the age of 16 is when I realized, okay, wait, this, something's not connecting the right way, what's going on, like I'm not understanding why things are happening different. And then I realized, my mom would always tell me, Jordan, you know you, you're not like everybody else, like your hair's not the same, your skin color's not the same, your body type's not the same. And so then that's when I was just like, that makes more sense. But I feel like now that we're understanding more, we're able to embrace who we are and we can just be who we want to be. Mm -hmm. So over the years, you know, I started off, you know, when I was two feet shorter mm -hmm. uh, as a gymnast, and it was very rigid on the aesthetic, especially being a gymnast of color. It was it was really hard, you know, natural hair and everything. 
So where have you seen gymnastics go with how you present yourself on the floor, whether that be the way you wear your hair or the acceptance of our bodies in the Leos? Yeah, I feel like it's taken a little bit of a, like, of a turn. It's progressing like slowly. I feel like there's still a little bit more that they you know, need to open up to not everybody being the same skin tone and everything and having the same hair, but I feel like it's like a little bit open now. You can wear your natural hair and they're kind of embracing that, mm -hmm. but um, as far as like body shape, you know, gymnastics is, you know, they want what they want. We mm -hmm. all know what the body type and how they're going to do and say whatever. But I feel like as far as like the hair side and everything and us just being ourselves, it's been a little bit more open to us. How does that make you feel to be able to just present yourself as who you are? My sister, she doesn't have the same type of hair as me. So she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. So I feel like I should wear my hair this way just because I get so many compliments. And people always ask me like, why don't you straighten your hair? It's like, I don't know, I just, I'm comfortable with my hair this way. Mm -hmm. And I always have been. It's beautiful. Thank you. I do have to say like, for you to be in, embracing like, who you are in your own skin, I think that's definitely a huge thing because it's only gonna change the game of what people look like, who they look at, you know what I mean? Like, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, you guys remember when Connor did this? Like, mm -hmm. remember when Connor did that, you know? So I think it's pretty cool. Jordan, one thing about you is you bring the energy and I love the way you express yourself, particularly on floor, because you know I live for the music choices that you make, whether that be Elite or um, NCAA. So what goes into you choosing your music and how have you seen that change over the years? My first NCAA music, I did all girls. Because mm -hmm. I feel like when it comes to the industry of music, girls aren't recognized enough. Like, especially us, mm -hmm. like our skin tone and everything, like we don't get recognized enough. So the first, like the two I had in there was Normani and Lizzo mm -hmm. because I feel like those two are, are very underrated artists and I just wanted to like show people like it's okay to have p artists in your floor music that are able to embrace who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it's pretty cool to be able to do that because like a lot of people recognize that and I just want to continue to embrace that not only just through my sport but also through the world mm -hmm. as well. Can you talk to me about some of the trials and tribulations you've had, how your family has gotten you through it, or how your family has served as your motivation? Kind of, I think I'll start with you. I've fallen out of love for gymnastics so many times, but once my dad passed away, I feel like I fell in love with it again, just knowing that he wanted it for me and he wanted the best for me and he wanted me to go to the Olympics and he wanted me to continue my journey. I feel like my family just supported me around behind that and just wanted to support me and build me up and help me through the process. So, you know, my sister, my brothers, they always come to my meets, even though they don't even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're there to support me and just having them is just amazing. I'd probably have to say, like Connor, I lost the love of this sport so many times, but I knew I had more to give in myself. One person in particular, actually in 2018, Simone had told me, she was like, look, she kind of knew the situation that had happened with my mom. Um, there was this big thing that had happened and it kind of took a toll on our family. Mm -hmm. um, we lost our house, we lost cars, we lost every, like almost felt like we lost our lives. Um, and so with Simone there being by my side, she kind of told me, you know what, like you can do anything you put your mind to, like you deserve to continue and do what you want to do. And I was like, wow. I think it all just comes down to the right supporters and the right people that you have behind you because, you know, my circle is only so big. Like, I, I have those certain people that are just there with me and have been with me every step of the way. So I guess it comes from idols and the greatest of all times that have kind of just taught me well. And I feel like I should be able to do that with the generation that's under me and just be like, you know what, if I was able to do it, you are able to as well. But Connor. You told us at 11 years old, 2024 is where it's at, right? And I understand that, you know, you had the opportunity to, co to compete at the last Olympics, um, but your sights have always been set in 2024. So how have you been planning for it? Um, what does that men mentally look like to you? And how do you reset from, you know, the last four years? It's just such a long journey for me. And I've been doing this for so long, starting elite when I was eight years old and I'll be 19 in 2024. Finally, it's like a year away and I'm finally like ready for it and I'm prepared and I've built myself so long and just preparing since I was 11. Um, so I'm just like ready and I know it's coming and like last year I was not ready. Or 2021, I was just, when I was able to compete and try for the Olympics, I was just like, this is not for me, you know. The mental take that it took on me, it just 
wasn't good and I was ready for 2024 after last year. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about the process of you meeting your goals versus not meeting your goals and what you want from your future? Um, yes, yeah. so after like just being that one spot away from making mm. the Olympic team 20 in 2020. I mean, what's that like? Just like dive I into know. that one spot away. <laughs> um, I mean, it was tough, but like I'm such a fighter and I'm just like, there's more for me to prove, you know, like this isn't just the end of your gymnastics career, you know, but I had dreams of going to Worlds and, you know, like that was just, everything just worked out in like its favor. Like I couldn't have asked for more. And so like, just from that to like now this journey to 2024, it's just been like great. Like my mental's changed, I'm happy. And like, just honestly, like whatever it takes, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you said so much more to prove. What you proving? Um, I just feel like when I was competing in 2021 or 2020, you know, it just wasn't fully there. It wasn't fully ready, I guess. So um, just, bring it all together and putting my best foot forward for 2024. And your best foot was forward because you are the Olympian at the table, okay? <laughs> so the mental endurance that it takes and the physical endurance, just talk about what it's like to make the Olympic team and how to uh, compete on that level. I was only four months off of making the 2016 Olympics. And so knowing just like Connor, hers, but her eye was set on 24, the same way my eye was set on 2020, mm -hmm. well, 2021. Right. But like for me, after the switch, how Shy switched to Seattle, everything just mm -hmm. was in a blink of an eye. That was the same thing for me when I moved to Texas. And so I do have to say, like, for the both of you going into this next realm of a year and a half, basically, is, like, just make sure you pace yourself. Make Absolutely, sure you yeah. understand your body, your mind, and everything like that. Because it is hard. It is. You're going to have your days where you're just like, oh, my gosh, why am I in this gym? To, oh, my gosh, like, let's go. Let's learn a new skill. You know, like, that's how it's going to work. But, honestly, you guys are, like, dedicated and you're motivated enough and you understand your body so well that you guys will be able to be, like, at the beginning of 24, okay, I'm ready. Right. And so that's, I feel like that's the easiest you guys can do. Like if you just go out there and be like, okay, look, I'm going to step on a, up to, onto this floor or beam or bars or whatever event you're on and go, you're going to go out there and do your best because I know that's something that's more to take from than it is being scared of doing something. And y'all are such a, an integral part of history already. So what do you see as the future for gymnastics, especially for gymnasts of color? Personally, I think it'd be really cool if there was an all black team going. Ooh, fire. The whole podium. <laughs> <laughs> the whole podium, the whole team. I feel like it's like the whole podium, the whole team. I feel like some way in some form, there's gonna be a black girl magic competition. Mm -hmm. I'm manifesting it now. I mean, if I gotta do it, I'm gonna do it. Absolutely. Like if there's just a, it literally is just black girl magic. Yes. Like the, I feel like that's something. All the crowns. crowns. Yes. With, literally, that's your reward. Mm -hmm. Crown, here's your medal. Yes. Crown, Eventually here's your medal. So much. Like, like we're gonna have like black judges and like, like everything. I feel, and literally, I feel like it's just gonna be that. like a whole cultural change. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna like push. Absolutely, to, yes. We have fists right. now, so that's already amazing. Like, They're now that we it. have an HBCU, so you, right. two HBCUs, right. mm -hmm. that only gives the more, like, the opportunity for more HBCUs to be welcomed. Mm -hmm. Because it's not, like, nobody didn't welcome them in. They were right. all, like, hyped for them and, like, oh my gosh, congratulations. Like, literally <laughs> sobbing. And the fact that you have celebrities, aka SZA, mm -hmm. supporting you is already, like, a huge thing. And so knowing that itself just makes us feel like, okay, you know what? We're just gonna keep going. Right. We're gonna keep going no matter what, whether or not I'm walking on one leg or not. Like, right. I'm gonna keep going whether my eyelash is down to my toe. Okay. Like, <laughs> like, I'm gonna keep going because we are inspiring more people to do what they know needs to be put into this world. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's just gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. I feel yes. like we're it's just- It's crazy how it went from us three from championships to making history literally. to this now making history. And just literally. history, yeah, just on and on and on. So just to see that continuing and like, we finally have something and something's going great for us. It's just that, it's just amazing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like to see everything, like watching teammates and even like girls reaching out to me from the fist team, like, oh, I inspire you, I love you so much. I'm like, it just, it's just so warming and, so sweet. Did you know how much you were pushing the culture though? Like at the time? I mean, did you know like that you were like, I'm stepping out here, I'm, I'm thicker, I'm getting it on the floor, I'm doing all the things, I am not what is conventionally digestible. Did that ever rock your brain? I feel like it kind of did, but yeah. kind of didn't. didn't it, right? Because like in our brains, we're like, okay, this You're is, still, right, right. we're still 
in it. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I feel like if we, if we were just like, that was our competition, then we stepped back, mm -hmm. it would have been like, oh, wow, look what we did. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, but we were still in it. Right. Like, me and Shai still had competitions that we were still doing, you know, and it was mm -hmm. kind of like, wow, we did that? Right. Because I knew, I knew after I landed my dismount on bars, because mm -hmm. I was the last one to go. Mm -hmm. And I was like, once I saw my name go in that third spot, I was like, we just did something history. <laughs> we did <laughs> we it. We did it. I sat there, I literally looked at the and Cecile said, what? Like, she was like, wow, you guys did that. I said, mm-hmm. And we'll do it again. <laughs> and we'll do it again. <laughs> I love it. And Connor, you're so young, but I, you've been so impactful. Have people reached out to you? And like, what has that been like if they have? So many people. And it's just like, we know that we're inspiring them because they tell us so many times. And of course, our goal is the Olympics and our dream. But our dream is also to inspire other young girls to do what we do. So just seeing everybody like in my DMs and Michelle Obama posted us and I was like, oh my gosh, this is just crazy. No. Like, I was like oh, throwing my mom. phone. <laughs> I was like, mom, no way. <laughs> that's funny, that's yes. funny. But it's, it's really, really says something. And you know, Jordan, you said you want the meat to have the crowns. And so Absolutely. if you can give a crown to any black or brown gymnast out he here, give them a crown mm -hmm. as, um, a piece of advice entering the space. So Shai, we'll start with you. We'll go down the line about the crown. Um, yes, to never give up, believe in what you can do, and honestly, just don't let anything like get in your way. Mm. Basically the same thing, never give up, have fun with it, and continue. Mm -hmm. um, mine would be always believe in the power of your dreams, Ooh. and nothing can really like push you to do anything. You can only push yourself. Um, you can't control the uncontrollables. So if you kind of just put your mindset into what you want to do and how you want to do it, then do it. Mm -hmm. Because you should always remember your why. And like Connor said, always have fun. Mm -hmm. Be confident in yourself, you know, go out there and do you. Nobody can take that away from you. Mm -hmm. You were created for a reason. And with that, thank you all for coming to this big round table. Until next time, the icons, we're out.